Hi, I'm Dr. Cindy Pang. I am a gynae oncologist, which means I take care of women with gynae cancers. And today I'll be sharing with you about human papilloma virus, which is otherwise known as HPV, as well as the vaccination. HPV is a very common virus. It's a family of over 100 over viruses, but only a few of them cause cancer. A certain number of them causes genital warts, and it's very, very common in the environment. About 70% of women will get HPV somewhere in their lifetime, and it's spread by skin-to-skin -skin contact. The HPV vaccination is, uh, has been in the market for about 10 years, and it is part of the school program for uh, the vaccination program in certain countries such as Australia, the United Kingdom, as well as the United States. In Singapore, it's still an opt-in system whereby you need to go to the doctor for the vaccine. This is not a live vaccine. It has the antigen, which is the virus uh, signature, carried on a um, uh, protein and uh, is given in three jabs over a period of six months. The HPV is the ca cause of cervical cancer in over 90% of cases, which means that one has to get HPV before getting pre-cancer due to HPV and then eventually change to cervical cancer. So this process takes many many years, about 10 to 20 years in the average person. Certain things can speed up this process. For example, if a person has other viruses, for example, other sexually transmitted diseases that will make the change faster. If they are immunocompromised, which means that they are on steroids, for example, if she has um, lupus, which requires her to take steroids, or if she has had a transplant that requires her to be immunosuppressed, or if she's a smoker. Smoking somehow reduces the immunity you have down there and makes this change happen faster. So HPV can cause pre-cancer of the cervix and eventually cervical cancer. Vaccines are, uh, are useful because vaccines produces antibodies in the patient's body so that if they get uh, infected with the virus, it clears the virus before it, it enters the body. And I believe that the HPV vaccination is very useful to prevent cervical cancer because the protection rate in uh, the, the studies that they have done is over 90% for patients who have not been exposed to the virus before. When we say not exposed to the virus, we mean that patients who have never had sex before. Because this virus being so common, having sexual intercourse or any form of sexual penetration will make you prone to having the virus already. Okay, the HPV vaccination is uh, recommended between the age of 9 to 26. That's because the studies that have been done for these group of women between 9 to 26 shows a good protection. The older ones become, uh, if you get vaccinated, sometimes you don't produce that much antibody response. So we don't know whether the um, protection rate will be as high. In fact, some studies actually quote the protection rate as 30 to 40% once you have crossed the age of 26. Also, if you're older, there's a higher chance that you're sexually active already. So you may have already been exposed to the virus. Once you're exposed to the virus, the virus causing changes in your cervix, having the vaccine doesn't make a difference. The vaccine produces antibodies that prevent you from being um, attacked by the virus. So once the virus is on you, the vaccine doesn't work. So this HPV vaccination is given as three injections and the good thing about this HPV vaccine is lifelong, which means that after these three injections, the woman is protected for life. In Singapore, it's, uh, it's good that it's MediSafe claimable for girls only. This vaccine, the quadrivalent, which is the one that protects against four different strains, can be used for boys, but that is um, not covered by MediSafe. Whereby, if you have more people vaccinated, there will be less of the virus in the community and then there will be less virus infection in patients who are not vaccinated. To me, I feel that a HPV vaccine is a um, something being recommended and I'm very pro-vaccine. The side effects of the vaccine are actually quite little. Usually, patients will complain of some pain over the injection site, some redness, and occasionally, in about 20% of the time, they may get fevers. But generally speaking, this vaccine is very safe and um, we would endorse it. The vaccine would be an injection as with any other injections. Most patients don't complain of the pain because the needle use is very small and it's really done really quickly. So some women may have the vaccine and not know they are pregnant. So uh, once they discover that they have the uh, pregnancy, we normally recommend them postponing the next dose of the vaccine to after the pregnancy. Studies have shown that in this group of women who doesn't know that they're pregnant but received the vaccine, there's no increased risk in birth defects. So yes, the vaccine is probably safe, but no studies have been done on pregnant women. These um, conclusions are done on uh, women who didn't know they were pregnant at the time when they had the vaccine. I think the most important point is that they're not aware that they need to have this vaccine before they become sexually active. Because they hear the word cervical cancer, they think, oh, this is something you need to worry about at the same time when you start worrying about having pap smears, that's when you're sexually active. But this concept is wrong because you should have the vaccine before you get exposed to the virus. Another reason is also because this vaccination is an opt-in, which means that you need to go to the doctor to ask for the vaccine. So a lot of patients procrastinate. 
Cervical cancer is the most preventable gynecological cancer. It was number 10 on the last cancer registry review, but I believe that the numbers can go much lower. That's because there are two effective screen, uh, preventive methods. Secondary prevention means that you do pap smears as well as your HPV testing. And primary prevention is in the form of vaccinations. I found out about the vaccinations through a roadshow at Changi General Hospital. There were a lot of brochures and nurses there to speak to us about the vaccination. There were minimal side effects and we spoke to a few doctors about it and it was a good preventative measure, a good preventative vaccination. And also there were a few good discounts and if you were below the age of 26, you get to pay through your Medisafe. I decided to get the vaccination to prevent myself from getting any sort of cancer, in this case cervical cancer. The process of the vaccination was fairly simple. Basically, there's three different doses. One immediately after you sign up, and then another one is at a month later, and then the third one is about six months later. So once you go there, you just get a jab. It's over very quickly in two minutes. The jabs were not painful at all. Um, there was very minimal side effects even. I would definitely recommend other girls to get the vaccination. Prior to the roadshow, I had no idea about how important this would be for me and for other women as well.